from Hollywood. It's time now for John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Dan Mates. You left word for me to call? Oh, Lieutenant, I've been trying to see you on this La Tourette thing. What's your connection, Dollar? I'm investigating for the National Underwriters. Oh. Did you know Thompson? Yeah. Too bad. I'll uh, be tied up till after lunch. Want to get together then? Anything I can do in the meantime? No, thanks. But enjoy the weather, Dollar. I don't think you'll enjoy the case. I'll see you in my office about two. Right, Lieutenant. John Lund in the transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, National Underwriters, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the La Tourette matter. Expense account item one, $97.50. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Denver. I arrived at 6.30 in the morning with a cold, sun-filled dawn. I reacquainted myself with the mile-high city at the airport restaurant, where I drank coffee and waited for my luggage. I'd been there once before on a case in 1947, but the Denver I saw this time was a great deal different. Bigger, filled out, bustling. Towns, like people, change. I arranged to rent a car from the Avis people and drove on into the city itself. There I checked in at the Cosmopolitan, showered and shaved, and... Waited until 9 o'clock before I rang Bessie Thompson's room. Who? Johnny Dollar, Bessie. Oh, you're here? Yeah, as a matter of fact, in the same hotel. Same case Tommy was working on? Yeah. Be careful, Johnny. Everybody seems to die who has anything to do with it. Why don't I buy you some ham and eggs? Why not? Expense account item two. Four dollars and... No. No, I guess not. This one was on me. Buying breakfast for the widow of the man who died on the case I was taking over. It was a difficult meal. I buried him here. Yeah? I would have taken his body back to Hartford with the expenses and all. Besides, it doesn't really make any difference where you're buried. The ground was frozen here, too. I hear they have to use jackhammers What to happens now, Bessie? I haven't anything to stay around here for. I guess I'll go home. Try and get a plane out sometime today. Maybe that'll be better. I'm 32 now. I'm still attractive. I suppose some man will come along. Even men. Bessie, what is this? You tell me what it is. The coroner said that Tommy might have been drunk. That he wanted out on the highway and that the driver of the car that hit him could have done it and not even known it. I know Tommy drank. But not like that. Or did he? What do you mean? You were with him for three weeks in Omaha last year. When he was away from home, from me, Johnny, was he... I mean, did he drink a lot and get around? I never saw him do anything like that, Bessie. Honest? Honest. Don't lie to me now. He was in love with you, Bessie, and he didn't care who knew it. Don't torment yourself with thoughts like that. We're awful that way, aren't we? I mean, women. I think you're wonderful that way, too. Thanks. Tommy was murdered, Johnny. It couldn't have been a hit-and-run accident. Bessie, I... And they aren't doing anything about it. They haven't found out a thing. Oh, easy, honey. They're working on it. You know that. It's all tied in with that Latourette man. Tommy found out something, and he was killed for finding it out. Bessie, I'll have to tell you right now... What reports Tommy sent in on La Tourette don't make him responsible in any way. Then why are you here? Just to wrap up the details. I see. There'd have to be something more than what we have now. Then there is something more. Tommy phoned long distance the night before he was killed. He said he thought he'd be coming home in a couple of days. Did he say anything about the case? No, but he was coming home. That meant he had it about finished. He sent in a report the day before he was killed. There was nothing. But the police didn't find any report for that day in his room. 
How did he get out to that place on the Golden Road? Who was he with? Johnny, he was killed. He had something on someone in this case, and he was killed. If he was, we'll find it out. All right. Where is he buried? Crown Hill Cemetery. I'll send some flowers out there. Get the man who ran him down. He'd like that a whole lot better. Yeah, I guess he would. I suppose I was trying to tell her in the gentlest way I knew that men do go out to taverns and drink, that occasionally they do drink too much, and that it was entirely possible that Tommy Thompson had been killed as reported, and not for any information or investigating connected with Frank LaTourette. When I met and talked with Lieutenant Mapes at 2 o'clock, he confirmed this. Here's the report from our arson man. Uh-huh. And this is from Homicide. Uh-huh. You can take those copies with you if you like. I had them made up for you. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. The fire was reported by a passerby about 2 o'clock last Wednesday morning. By the time the trucks got there, the whole bookstore was in flames. When they broke in, they found Mrs. Lotzerette's body. She'd suffocated in the smoke. Her husband said she'd been there working on the books. Uh-huh. There was no evidence that her death was anything but accidental. And in the opinion of our arson man, the fire was caused by her cigarette. She fell asleep working in the office, and the place caught fire. But uh, your man Thompson probably sent you all this, didn't he? Yeah, the fire policy had to be investigated. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as Thompson's death goes, we're looking for a hit-and-run artist. The people who operate the tavern out there said he absolutely was not in there that night. Mm Mm-hmm. At any rate, we'll have to go on that assumption because we haven't been able to dig up anyone who can say he was there that night. The tavern people could be lying. Thompson could have gone in there, gotten himself loaded, and walked out in front of a car. They'd be in license trouble if that happened. Yeah, sure. On the other hand, we'll just have to assume Thompson wasn't in that tavern at all. And what was he doing out on the Golden Road? I don't know. You know how he got there? I haven't found that out either. Still checking the cab company. He might have been with someone? Well, he might have. I don't know that either, Dollar. I suppose you've wondered if it could be connected with La Tourette. Oh, yes. I've, I've wondered. When a man in the same business dies like that, you're bound to wonder. But wondering about things is one of our hazards, Dollar. Well, you have it all right there. Since La Tourette stands to collect about $80,000 fire damages and 17000 on his wife's death, he's been gone into twice now. Your man Thompson did a lot of it, and we did a lot of it. Yeah. Now, the night of the fire, La Tourette was bowling over at a place on uh, Glen Arm. Seventeen witnesses saw him there. He's in good financial shape, doesn't know anybody a dime. The neighbors tell us he's always had a nice home life. He has a boy who plays football in one of our high schools. So, why look at La Tourette anymore? Yeah, but... But your man Thompson was killed looking into it. Is that it? That's it, Lieutenant. Thompson's wife's in town. She buried him yesterday, and she's pretty broken up. Sure she is. I talked to her at the funeral. Her husband died hard and cold out on a lonely road, and they, we, say he was drunk and got in front of a car. But in spite of the questions we were just tossing around about how he got out there on the Golden Road and what he was doing there, it still looks like a hit and run on a drunk. And that has seemed to about end it? No, no, I should say not. We want to find the bird who ran Thompson down. And if there isn't enough in those reports to satisfy you that the fire was an accident, that Mrs. La Tourette's death was an accident, and that Thompson's death was what we say it is, then just sound your horn. I'm around all day and I'm open to any kind of suggestion. Okay? That sounds fair enough, Lieutenant. I might give you a ring. Right. I spent the rest of the day in my hotel room going over the bulky envelope of police reports. I compared them with information Thompson had forwarded to the office before he'd been killed. No matter how you looked at it, the whole business was a story of tragedy, of violence and death. Mapes was right. I wasn't enjoying the case, and I was anxious to close it. It was dark by the time I got out to Park Hill and found the La Tourette home. Through the drawn shades of a living room, I saw the figure of a man. He didn't move when I used the doorbell. Hey. Hello in there. Hello? Who is it? My name's Dollar, Mr. LaTourette. He won't be back until tomorrow. 
I wonder if I could leave some papers for him to sign. Leave them at the door. I'll get them later. There was something about the voice, the strain and shakiness in it that worried me. I didn't leave the papers outside the door. I merely tried the knob. All right. Come in if you have to. Hey, what is this? Why the shotgun? Get in. You get inside and close the door. I'll kill you. Okay. Move right over there, mister. Right over there. All right, you can stop. Where's Mr. Latourette? Oh. You'll get the same thing if you do anything funny at all. Why? You'll be asking that from now to the day I die. Now get your hands up. Up. They're up, Sonny. Look, he might still be alive. You could call a doctor and... He's dead. I made sure. I don't know who you are or why you did this, but you'll never get away with it. They'll catch you. Who cares? You better give me that shotgun. Don't try to get close to me now. Who are you? I'm an insurance investigator. My name is Dollar. Mr. Dollar, I don't quite know what to do about you. Give me the gun. Oh, no. Oh, no. This little baby's got more work to do tonight. Yes, sir, just a little more work. Why did you kill him? He killed a man and a woman. I guess that gives me a right to turn around and kill him. What man? What woman? Somebody you probably know. A man named Thompson. He ran over him the other night. Oh? Sure. He ran him down with a car because Mr. Thompson found out about a woman. His lady love. His lady love? Oh, he had one. A real pretty lady. Well, them burn my mother to death in a fire so they can be together. I'll see that they get together real soon. Your mother? Your name is Lotteret? That's it. Lotteret. That's my old man lying there. star John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Bruce Lotterette was young and he was obviously out of his head with fear. But in spite of it, he held on to the shotgun. Turn around. Look, Bruce, this won't do you any good. You can't get away with a thing like this. Turn around now. Turn around. Go on. If you're going to shoot me the way you did him, you're going to have to work on it a little harder. I won't turn around and die that way. I don't want to shoot you. You haven't done anything to me now. I told you to turn around and do it. He didn't do anything to you either, but you shot him. He killed my mother. He couldn't have killed her. The police checked him. The police don't know about Evelyn. Nobody knows about Evelyn but me. She burned the store down and he might as well have done it. Evelyn? Evelyn who? I'm going to kill her too. And I'll shoot you if you don't stop right where you are. I don't want to, but I will. That's better. Now stay there. Bruce. Bruce! Give me the police. Hurry. I gave a license number and the description of the car over the phone along with the other information on Bruce Latourette. Several prowl cars arrived, but there was nothing that could be done for Frank Latourette. I waited for Lieutenant Mapes. We sure pitched this one wrong. Oh. Yeah, everybody did. Huh? 8.15. I thought they'd pick up that kid by now. APB's been out since you phoned. Shouldn't be too hard to spot. He wants to kill somebody named Evelyn. And he looked pretty determined. I never saw such a thing in my life. You suppose he's dreamed all this? I don't know him well enough. Lotred might have had a woman who helped him burn down the store and kill his wife. He might have had to kill Thompson when Thompson found out about it. Yeah, that's the part that makes it no dream. 
Dollar, if we don't have that kid in our hands pretty soon, we'll be standing in another room someplace looking at another corpse tonight. Yeah, I know. How could we miss it? Who's Evelyn? Why didn't any of these people in the neighborhood know anything about it when we questioned around? I don't know. Let's see. Farrell and Hayes, Thog, Weiner. Come on, Willie. Let's talk to these neighbors again. Okay. Boy, what I'd give for one gossipy old lady who knew everybody's business. You mean who knew somebody named Evelyn? Yeah, I guess that's what I mean. An hour of questioning in the neighborhood revealed no one who had any knowledge of Frank LaTourette's association with a woman whose first name was Evelyn. Bruce LaTourette seemed to have completely disappeared somewhere within the city. However, at 10.15, a young girl walked into police headquarters and asked to see Lieutenant Mapes. I was in the office when she was ushered in. What's your name, miss? Uh, Dorothy Kelly. This is Mr. Dollar. I'm Lieutenant Mapes. How do you do? At the desk, they said you had some information about Bruce LaTourette. Isn't that right? What will you do to him? Try and stop him from killing another person. He's already killed his father. Yes, I know. I heard it on the newscast at 9 o'clock. You want to sit down? Thank you. You know Bruce? Uh, yes, we, we go to school together. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how to tell you this. It, it isn't easy, I mean. I've heard Bruce talk about it ever since his mother was killed in a fire last week. I... Well, maybe I shouldn't have come down here at all. Well, if it'll help us stop him from killing someone else, you did the right thing. You know where Bruce is, Dorothy? No, honest, I don't know that. I'd tell you if I knew. What has Bruce been talking about, Dorothy? Well, he he was pretty upset about his mother's death and took it pretty hard. Yeah, sure. He was out of school all last week, and then when he came back this week, we had lunch together one day. He hardly ate anything, just sort of sat there staring out, you know? Uh Uh-huh. Did he say anything? Not at first. He used to talk to me all the time. I, I mean, we're pretty good friends. Oh, gosh, if my mother knew I was mixed up uh, in this... We'll, and... we'll talk to your mother, Dorothy. Go on. Well, Bruce was sitting there, and all of a sudden he said, they killed her. I thought he was crazy. I said, who killed her? And he said that his father and somebody named Evelyn killed her. He said that Evelyn set fire to the store and that his mother couldn't get out. He said his father had been seeing Evelyn for a long time. Mm-hmm. And he also said something about telling all this to a man named Thompson in it. Thompson was killed, too. Did he tell you who Evelyn was? No, sir. Did he say where she lived? No. Did he mention her last name? Gosh, I don't remember. I, I think he just called her Evelyn. Nothing else about her? No, sir. Oh, wait. What? Uh, she teaches skiing. What? Well, he, he said he met her once with his father when he was skiing. She's a ski instructor somewhere. Does that help you any? It might. <laughs> It did help. Three quarters of an hour later, the owner of a sporting goods store remembered a woman named Evelyn Warder, who had skiing classes on weekends. He located an address for her in North Denver, and I drove out there with Lieutenant Mates. She was a tall, plain-looking woman in her early 30s. What is it? Miss Evelyn Warder? Yes. Police. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. What about? Uh, may we come in? Well, yes. You know a man named Frank LaTourette? Uh, no, why? His son shot him to death tonight. Do you know him? Miss Water? No. Why are you here telling me this? Don't you know? No, I don't know. I have no idea. I was there right after Mr. LaTourette was killed. His son said he was going to kill a woman named Evelyn. He's still loose. What are you doing, talking to everyone named Evelyn? You going if down? you didn't know La Tourette, you don't have anything to worry about. If you're lying to us, you're liable to get killed. He came by because we thought you might be the one he's after. We don't have a lot of time. I don't know anyone named La Tourette. And you're okay. Sorry to have bothered you. That's all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. The pouting mouth, the plain face tall, ungainly person of Evelyn Water didn't fit the role of a homebreaker or murderess. But we sat in the car across the street from her house. Mapes put in a call for two more cars to come out. It really didn't get sunny all day today. And this was a pretty lousy night. Nothing to say? 
No. Nope. Sure you don't. You could be in a nice warm hotel room getting a head full of sleep right now. I can do that any time. Right now, I want to be around when somebody talks about a fire my company has an $80,000 claim on. And the murder? And Tommy's murder. Oh, the whole thing. Tommy's wife this morning wondering if he played around with other women. A kid standing there shaking and crying and killing and out to do more killing. I'd like to sleep. I don't think I could. wonder where that kid went to. Should have had him by now. If he's stuck with a car at all. How could he walk around town carrying a shotgun without being a little conspicuous? Yeah. This could be the wrong, Evelyn. It's the only one we've got a line on. Yeah. Dollar, this stinks. What? That's the right Evelyn in there. And if that kid isn't picked up, he'll be around to kill her tonight. Yeah. So let's go in and give her the business. She said... Hey! Across the street. What? That's the car. The kids? Yeah. Let's go. How'd he get here without... Over there. Yeah. Come on. Bruce! Not to wreck. This place is covered. You'll never get away alive. Ow. Yeah. You okay? Shooting in the dark. That isn't going to do you any good, Bruce. Let me try. Sure. Bruce, this is Johnny Dollar. Remember? Tell your police friends to keep down or I'll kill somebody. I don't want to kill anybody but her. I will if you try to stop me. And they don't want to kill you, Bruce. Put down the gun. I'm going to get her. The law will take care of her if what you say is true. I want to take care of her. Evelyn. Evelyn. This is Bruce on a wreck. You killed my mother. We're going to have to do it, Johnny. Wait. Bruce. She isn't there. Get him away from here. Get him away from here. Get him away from here. Upstairs window. Yeah. She wasn't here, huh? Make himself a perfect target. One more chance, Lazarek. Throw the gun down. Okay, boys. Well, that did it. Yeah. I'll get an ambulance. Why is they let me get it? Take it easy. They'll get her. They did get her. She was taken down and charged with suspicion of murder and arson. Bruce LaTourette was removed to the emergency hospital and died there three hours later. I was in his office when Lieutenant Mapes had a stenographer take a confession from Evelyn Water. All right, Miss Warder. I met Frank three years ago skiing. He asked me to have dinner with him one night in town. Later, he'd see me every now and then. It was his idea. Killing his wife? That? No, that was mine. You figured out how to do it? Yes, why? You mind telling us about it? I knew she worked on the books in the store at night. I had a key to the store. I just went in there and saw she was sleeping and started to fire. How? Waste basket. I knew the spoke and that little office would do the rest. Had you ever met her before? Oh, no. You never talked to her at all? No. Did he? I mean, about a divorce? He said he did, but I know he didn't. He didn't want a divorce her for me. So you killed her? I guess I did. The insurance man, Thompson? Yes. I guess the boy told him about us. He followed us out to the place on the Golden Road. I told Frank we'd have to get rid of him. And we did. Who was driving, Evelyn? I was. Your car? Yes. You killed them both, then? Mrs. LaTourette and Thompson? You don't think Frank could have the nerve to do anything like that, do you? I don't know why I went for him. I really didn't, I guess. He had money. But no nerve. Okay, Evelyn. Anything else? 
What happens to me? That's up to the court, Evelyn. Expense account item three, twelve dollars, hotel and board. Item four, twelve dollars and fifty cents, car rental. Item five, same as item one, plane fare back home. Expense account total, two hundred and nineteen dollars and fifty cents. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were John McIntyre, Jeanette Nolan, Sammy Hill, Virginia Gregg, and Eddie Firestone. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverly inviting you to join us next week at this time when John Lund returns as yours truly, Johnny Dollar.